that, but there's a strike going on, you know. I'm sorry, I have another call waiting. Goodbye. Hello, Desmond, dear. I see you. Well, let's make it three o'clock. All right. Goodbye. That'll hold him. Mary, how are you? Happy. And very grateful. What do I owe you for getting my husband back? How about a hug? Come, collect. <laughs> I guess that was stupid. My fault. I did want to thank you for your part in this conspiracy. Oh, the smile on your face, the light in your eyes. That's all the thanks I need. Uh, it just doesn't seem quite right. I feel so whole again, so wonderful. I want something good for you, too. All in good time. What did I do after all but aid and abet your mother in her scheme? Oh, as I understand it, you put her up to it. Oh, I just pointed out that she had a very good idea and that we ought to act on it. Besides, my motives weren't without self-interest. Oh? Sure, I figured if you and Jack were locked up together, there's an outside chance you'd end up loathing each other. Then you'd come running back to me with fire in your heart, desire in your breast. You saw that as a possibility. An extremely remote one, but I thought I'd wait and see. Tom, I'm sorry about all this. So am I. But I'm not left too badly off. I can live on my fantasies for a while. I'm not sure that's so healthy. Of course it is. It's the best thing about unfulfilled love. All the things you never know about each other who squeezes the toothpaste from the middle, who hogs the covers at night. I already know you snore. Oh, I see. Hmm. You'll always remain in my memory in a state of sheer perfection, the unattainable. Tom, please don't talk as if we can't stay friends. Of course we can stay friends. Only on the darkest days will I sit in my lonely tower and think. You could have had a splendid time, Mary. If things hadn't been so um, irreversible for me... You love Jack. That's right. But if I didn't, I just... You love me. Oh, well. Half a loaf. Mary, there's one thing I want you to know. What's that? Whatever happens, you can, you can count on me. I'm your friend. I know. Thank you. Take care. Bye. at the group Alicia Hello Delia Hey um you got a minute I came over here just to speak to you Well you know we're all pretty busy the strike is on Oh yeah I know H How would you like to go out for some lunch No I I have a half an hour and I'm meeting Bob Oh, that's great. That's great. I'm really glad the two of you are together. You know, he likes you an awful lot. You know, Delia, I, I uh, really have to go. I have twice as many things to do as, as usual. Please. I, I brought you something. 
It's from that little uh, specialty shop over on Broadway. See, they've got this whole new line of perfumes. It's uh, supposed to smell like fresh fruit. This is the uh, citrusy kind. It smells like oranges and lemons. Very sexy, though. That's, that's very nice, Delia, but uh, I cannot accept a present from you. Why not? I wanted to thank you because you helped me get better. I did. Yes, I see that you have made an incredible recovery, but I doubt that I had anything to do with it. Oh, no. Oh, no, you had a lot to do with it. And this was a terrible time for me being locked up in this hospital. No, I've gone through some very, very bad times before. See, I, I was scared and I was sick, and the ter terrible thing about it was I, I couldn't do anything to make myself feel better. But you learned. Oh, I learned, but I learned from you. See, you talk such sense. You know, when you told me that, that I was hurting the people that I loved, well, that gave me a certain kind of a willpower so I could pick up the pieces of my life and put them back together again. You know, you really are amazing. Dr. Pagano has been so nice to me, and Patty is so happy that I'm home. I want you to be glad. It's very, very important Oh, to me. I'm glad, Delia. If Pat and Bob don't have to worry anymore. Alicia, you don't understand something. Patty likes to worry about me. That seems very sad to me. But it is your life. I have to go. Wait a minute, wait. Wait, you really don't understand this. When Patty and I got married, he vowed that he would take care of me. Do that is when that? he thought that you were carrying his baby. But you and I know different, Delia. And you and I know that you are not alone in your department. You are right here in this hospital, and it was before your wedding day. Why are you doing this to me? Like you promised you wouldn't say anything to me. I haven't you said anything me. to anyone, but I get so tired of listening to you lie and making everyone worry no, no, about no, no, you. No, no, half lies, half lies. I, I got pregnant, and Patty was the father, and he felt responsible to me, and he wanted to marry me. Maybe you don't understand something. I've loved Patty my whole life. Now, you're making me feel as if these feelings that I have are wrong. It's not up to me what you feel. But lies are wrong. No. No, no, not when you're trying not to hurt somebody. No. Well, you and I just feel differently about these things. No, wait, wait, Alicia. Alicia, look, you, you gotta promise me something. I don't want you to tell anyone, please. I'm counting on you. Don't you ever get tired of counting on everyone? Do you know that you use people like if they were crutches? You won't tell, will you? I don't want to cause any more trouble. Thank you. Wait, wait. Wait, you didn't, you didn't take this. Um, it's a little bottle. Um, I'm sorry about that, but it was very, very expensive. See, I got this kind because I know Bobby would love it. Please. Okay. It's very nice, Delia. Thank you. See, I want good things for you. I want you and Bobby to be as happy as Patty and I. Thank you. Well, I better be going. Bye-bye. So there's smoke pouring out of the ventilating shaft. So we run downstairs thinking, my lord, they've set the place on fire out of their rage. Oh, my. <laughs> no such thing. They were just sending up smoke signals. We open the door, and there they are, snug as two bugs in a rug, like a couple of newlyweds. Oh. Well, they really are. They had so little time together before. Oh, that's such a happy story. <laughs> it was worth it, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, and I'd do my part all over again if I had to. <laughs> oh, if ever a man loved a child. <laughs> oh. Hi, me. Hi there, Jack. Well, hello there. Hello. Well, that's a long face he's got. Oh, yes. It's a pity, too. He's such a handsome fellow. Uh, <laughs> would you mind telling me what the joke is? Oh, would I be making a joke at your expense, Jack? Well, lately, I, uh, I don't trust you as far as I can see you. Oh. oh, now that's smart. You shouldn't trust anybody these days. Oh, yes. So, things are seldom as they seem. Amen. Look, uh, what's going on? Oh, well, Jack, darling, I don't mean to be cruel, but uh, when I uh, led you down the stairs the other day to the basement, that wasn't the first time I deceived you. She's full of tricks, this one. Oh, look who's talking. Maeve, <laughs> um, what is it? Oh, dear, it's a little harder than I thought it was going to be. Well, 
Let me say that uh, Miriam was part of the plot. She's never said a harsh word to Ryan in all of her life. She's given her the greatest care from the beginning. You, uh, set me up? <laughs> we did. Oh, I should be ashamed. I told Maeve I'd seen a young man in the park who liked Ryan very much and even gave her a present. And you put two and two together. Well, I didn't need a college degree. You see, and then Miriam and I hatched this little plot. Oh, and she carried out her part. Grand performance. Oh, well, you sure did. Uh, well, well, l l let me get this straight. Uh, it was all a hoax? I'm afraid so. <laughs> then you never hit her. R oh, Ryan. Oh, now, would I hit my little darling? I had nothing to worry about. No, but it was just as well that you were followed after the other, you see. Of course, we wouldn't have gone to such an extreme if we didn't realize that it had a good chance of succeeding. Uh, oh, are you angry? We do owe you an apology. Angry. Find out that my kid isn't in the hands of a, uh, 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 mm. <laughs> I'm sorry I should apologize to you for what I thought about you. No, not a bit. It just means that I did my job very well. You sure did. Well, now, tell me, how is my butt darling baby? Ryan, fantastic. Spent the night tucked in a dresser drawer. Mm. Slept just like a... Uh, like a baby, I guess. Oh. Right now, <laughs> she's with her that. Uncle Jumbo. Hi. 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 I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, that's okay. I was just shooting the breeze with the family. Um, maybe some things even you don't know. <laughs> you ready? What are you two all <laughs> To see Father McShane. Mere formality. Uh, we have to get married. Yes. Again. Hmm. <laughs> On the Sunday night movie, Life is Hard. All this for... ...every two and a half minutes. Call 800-656-HOPE. Uh, at least she hasn't been here yet, has no, she? No, she did not get here yet. How are you? Oh, I'm great. My little sister's getting better. I got a nice lunch date. Everything's roses. Ah, and here's your pretty friend. Hello. Hey. I'm sorry. It's a crazy house across the street. You know, the strike. Oh, it's sad that it's come to that. Yeah, well, I think they may have brought it on themselves. Of course, it makes double work for some people. <laughs> hey, you smell delicious. What is that? It smells like, uh, like an orange popsicle. That's good. Yeah. Hey, come on. I used to love popsicles when I was a kid. <laughs> that up, that's a great turn on. I think you better do get over to a table. What can I bring you? Uh, just a cheese sandwich. I oh, think. no, you don't, kiddo. Come on, you've been working a double shift. Maeve, could we have two bowls of lamb stew, a nice hot pot of tea, and an apple tart? Is that okay with you? If you say so. Coming up. Boy, I tell you, I do like that smell. I'm mm. glad. She will be glad, too. She gave it to me. Oh, really? How come? Did I miss a birthday or something? <laughs> no. No, she just uh, said that I had been helpful to her at the hospital. Ah. You know, I, I didn't want to accept it, but she was so hurt when I refused. She's really a very strange girl. Strange? Well, I know she's kind of unusual, Alicia, but... Oh, you really shouldn't judge her by the way she's been lately. I mean, she has been pretty sick, you know. Bob, do you really think that her behavior is any different? I mean, maybe just a little bit more extreme. Yeah, honey, but I don't think you understand. Uh, Dee had a pretty rough time of it growing up. I, I mean, I don't know how much I told you about it. You told me that your father was very sick. Right. And he died, and then your mother died soon after. Right, so she had a pretty rough time of it. I mean, my dad was in a mental institution, and she kind of felt that set her apart. She, she couldn't talk to anybody about it. I mean, Mom used to work all the time, but there wasn't enough money for food or, or clothes. I mean, Dean never really had any pretty things. Except maybe once in a while. Uh, I used to have a couple of jobs on the side when I was going to school. And I remember one time, Delia was going to her first dance, you know, and Maeve was working on making over an old dress at Kathleen's. And, I still needed that one little thing, you know, so so I had about oh, 12 bucks saved up. Mm. 
That's a lot of money back then, come on. <laughs> so I went downtown and Mary Ryan went with me and we picked out this nice, uh, kind of silky scarf-like thing that went around the shoulders. You mean a stole? Yeah, 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 a stole. Well, anyway, she put that darn thing up, she mm -hmm. wrapped herself up in it. She looked like a million bucks. Guys couldn't take their eyes off her that night. How did her big brother feel about that? It made her big brother proud. Of course, I had my hands full keeping an eye out for her. You know, it seems to me that Delia was very lucky in a lot of ways. No. No, I tried to do what I could for her, but I could never make it up to her. You see, she missed an awful lot. What about you? How do you mean? I mean, you talk about Delia's childhood, all the bad luck she had. But you had it, too. I mean, all the same things. It was your father, it was your mother. Yeah, well, of course, I was a lot older, you know, and I, I think it's easier for a guy. Don't kid yourself. Anyway, I think I got a lot to be grateful for now. Me too. Here, here. Excuse oh. me. Sorry it took so long. It's just, well, I'm here by myself. I don't, uh, I don't know what's with Kevin and John. Hey. Oh, that's all right, Maeve. Th thank you. No problem. <laughs> Enjoy yourselves. Yes, thank you. White strip. Oh, man. Do you have a minute? Of course, always. Come in. Uh, no, Father, I think you should stay sitting down. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you just see the look on your face. Well, I am a bit dazed. I bet you don't play much poker. <laughs> Not very successfully, I'm afraid. <laughs> Come in, sit down, sit down. Tell me, what's, what's, what's happened? Tell me what's going on. We're together. I can see that. But how? Well, I'll give Ma the pleasure of telling you how she managed it, but she forced us to face each other and our basic problems. And the basic fact that we belong together. My word. My word. And so... We have come to ask whether you would be so kind as to officiate at our wedding. This one should take. You will, won't you? Mary, Jack, nothing could have given me greater joy than to see the two of you walk through that door. But you must understand, this is a grave circumstance. Jack, the church heard your claim for an annulment on the grounds of fraud. After some deliberation, they took you at your word. How do you feel about that now? There was fraud, all right, Father. I was the fraud for getting an annulment at all. I was sick and mixed up. And I lied to myself before I lied to the Chancery. By the time I got there, I didn't know what was true. Well, what about your claim you never wanted children? You had witnesses. Johnny and Jumbo were telling the truth about what I said. But they both knew that I hadn't meant it. I, uh, forced them to testify. I don't know what to say. Except I'm ashamed and sorry. I did have my reasons, even though they don't make sense now. As I remember, you felt that Mary and the baby could get along a lot better without you. Mary seemed to be going bad and was trouble with her family. Yeah, I... I thought she and Ryan would be happier in the end without me. I never figured I'd fit into the Ryan scheme. What makes you think that will be any better now? 
Well, I, uh, I got just what I wanted. Uh, all the privacy in the world. But after Mary, it, it just didn't work. Now, there was one thing I was always straight about. I, I never said that I didn't love her. And now I learn that I love my daughter, too. I see. Well, I hope the two of you don't expect any overnight changes in oh. each other. You're the same people you were before. <laughs> we know that, Father. The worst mistake I made was trying to push Jack into a mold he didn't fit. And it's so ironic. Because I'm in love with the man he is. Do you feel you can perhaps be a little bit more flexible in matters concerning your family? Well, I still hope that maybe Jack and my family will learn to enjoy each other. But I'm not going to demand that, or expect it, or push for it. I've promised that. We're our own family now. What God has joined together. I have a secret I'd like to share with you two. I've never stopped praying you two would find your way. It may be an unbecoming vanity, but I couldn't let go of my judgment. You're right together. I'll be glad to marry you. I hope it'll be soon. The sooner, the better, Father. Thanks. <laughs> Anna Devane reunites with past love Robert Scorpio as the night shift becomes the center of a racial storm. The hospital drama you can't miss. An all-new General Hospital Night Shift. Tuesdays at 11 p.m. on SoapNet.